The remnants of Champlain Tower South look insurmountable. How do you get through the mounds of concrete and steel, the nest of electrical wires and plaster to reach the victims? The 24-7 efforts of first responders and engineers have been nothing short of heroic. We spent some time with some of the men and women who are risking their lives while methodically racing against time. with most of the building gone. We still have people standing upstairs that don't need to be evacuated. The building is gone. There's no elevators. There's, this is nothing. I mean, it, it almost resembles the trade center. A massive search and rescue is underway, uh, and we know that we're going to do everything we can possibly do to identify and rescue those who have been trapped in the rubble. Officials are still clinging to hope here. One boy was pulled out this morning, and rescuers say they are still hearing sounds from this rubble. Right now, teams are slowly tunneling in below the building, but they say things are still too unstable to send searchers on top of the pile. As we make uh, one hole, we uh, access a floor, we continue to the uh, various areas. We did receive sounds, what sounds like people banging. Any idea how many people are missing right now? Uh, well. There are over 100 units in that building. That's what is frightening us very badly right now. As the sun sets on the most tragic day this community can remember, we stand in solidarity once again to tell you we are working around the clock to search and rescue people. We're about 100 yards from where the collapse happened, and it smells like a fire. And that's because there have been little fires burning over the last 24 hours since the building partially collapsed. There's so many hazards we're encountering, and the fire just compounds it. Uh, the fire is deeply seated, deeply rooted uh, under the structure. Uh, so you've seen it in and out, and unfortunately, we keep uh, having flare-ups of it, and it's just not accessible. Unfortunately, this has been a tragic night. Our unaccounted for number has gone up to 159. We will continue search and rescue because we still have hope that we will find people alive. That is exactly why we're continuing. That is why we're using our dogs and our sonar and our cameras, everything possible to seek places where there may still be people. This is a risk to your life as well. Yes, yes, the reason I do this is because I want to help people. We don't do this for the money. We don't do this for fame. We do this because we want to help. That's why all these first responders, all the police are out here. We begin this morning with around the clock rescue and recovery efforts at the site of that collapsed apartment building in Surfside, Florida, just north of Miami Beach. Overnight, crews continued to search through the rubble in hopes of finding survivors. We do have a, a very advanced technology of sonar and microphones that can detect not only movement of the pile, but anybody tapping or anybody scratching. If we hear sounds of that nature, we will have the dogs come over. And if the dogs alert, then we take it from there. We continue opening search holes. We don't have a resource problem here. We have a luck problem. The issue is, is that we've been fighting the elements. We've been fighting the fire. But we have one objective, and that is to bring those people out of the rubble safely and return them to their families. We're just continuously moving forward with our mission, attempting to locate anyone who could potentially be alive in the rubble. Certainly not an easy mission, but again, you said you do believe, uh, or you have hope at least, that there are people alive under that rubble. We definitely have hope. Is that time nearing that it'll switch from a rescue effort to a recovery? We are in search and rescue, and we have just been joined by additional search and rescue team from Israel. Uh, we had already uh, some, some Mexican experts on scene. Uh, everybody that is needed is on the site and doing the work, and we're continuing our efforts to find people alive. This is the, one of the best, if not the best, uh, and the most experienced rescue team, Israeli rescue teams. They've been all over the world in many similar uh, situations. This is our responsibility as, as human beings. The fire, it's control. Uh, it's really hard to put out because of where it is at. It's at a uh, very ground level. 
and while they're doing their best with the machinery and the water. We're cutting a deep trench to assist us. It's now 125 feet in length into the pile. It's 20 feet wide and 40 feet deep. Now this trench is very critical to the continuation of the search and rescue process. David, every morning we all wake up and hope that there is some sign of life, some good news. What can you tell us about the latest on the rescue efforts today? Good morning, Gil. You just can't get past that number of 150 people missing. They hardly rest. They come off for about 45 minutes. They check their pulse. They check their O2 levels and they go back to work because that's what they do. They work to save lives. Good morning. The temporary stop in operations occurred at 0211 due to additional concerns for building stability. We're letting the nation know we can cooperate. I mean, just the, the simple act of everybody doing whatever needs to be done is, uh, it really makes a difference. Since our last briefing, I'm very pained to tell you that we found two additional bodies in the rubble, which brings our total count to 18, 18 fatalities. It is also with great sorrow, real pain, that I have to share with you that two of these were children, aged four and 10. So any loss of life, especially given the unexpected, unprecedented nature of this event is a tragedy. But the loss of our children is too great to bear. The collapse of Champlain Tower South will be remembered as one of the more horrific events in recent American history. But what will also be remembered is the resilience of the human spirit, the heroism of the first responders, the powerful faith of family and friends, the unity of a small and diverse community, and the collective support from people around the country and around the world. Our thoughts and prayers are with everyone here in Surfside, Florida now and in the weeks and months ahead. I'm Manuel Bajorquez from all of us at CBS News. Good night.